Hey, this is Matt Simpson, the Beer Sommelier at the Craft Brewers Conference here for BrewPot.com. We're going to interview some of the best craft brewers in the entire world. Come on, let's go. It's uh, David William Deschane, D-E-S-C-H-A-I-N-E, -E. and uh, I'm affectionately known as Diamond, and uh, I'm a brewer for Founders Brewing Company. We were mentioning earlier that you guys sort of have taken the the brewing world by storm, doing a lot of special barrel aged beers now, taking your base styles and turning them into barrel aged. What's all the what's your uh, the uh, uh, the impetus behind behind all that? And first, for those who don't know, tell tell me a few of your styles. I may know, but some people may not. Well, you know, the, we have a Red's Rye, which is a kind of a rye IPA. Um, that's one of my personal favorites. Centennial IPA, you know, is kind of our standard IPA. Along with that, we also have Double Trouble, our double IPA, and then Devil Dancer, which is our triple IPA, if, to, to invent a new style or make up a new style. And go ahead and tell people exactly what the ABV is on that. Uh, <laughs> it's 13 on the Devil Dancer, which is, uh, I guess, a very kind of a... Uh, brooding number, you know, the, to, to help it. You know, it's funny, a devil dancer always gets the comment of, uh, well, why do you call it devil dancer? Well, take a sip. The uh, Between the IBUs and the ABV, you know, you're, you're getting into a, a situation of a beer. <laughs> and then uh, now we've, yeah, we've done a lot with barrel aging. Uh, our breakfast stout, which eventually led to uh, Kentucky breakfast stout, now uh, called KBS. Um, and that just it lended itself so well to uh, the bourbon barrels, the flavor. Was there an issue with that? Why did you change the name to KBS? Yeah, it was a, a government thing. Uh, it's, it's because it's not a product of the state of Kentucky. We can't use the word, we can't use Kentucky as a description, which I thought it was more of an homage to the fact that all bourbon should come from Kentucky. You know, seeing how we are using bourbon barrels. Yep. And then we started bourbon age a lot of other things uh not a lot of releases on that but uh our dirty bastard scotch ale which uh, we call backwoods bastard is the barrel aged version and that's uh that's really delightful too and what's your barrel aging process you guys do it better than almost anybody and are you using you know tell me whether you're using barrels or whether you're using you know uh, beans and, and you know or chips or spirals or whatever no, no, and uh, barrels Unwashed barrels and uh, everything else is just about aging, you know, really about finding a place where it'll be safe, it won't get tousled around much, and it can just sit and let, let it do its magic, let the barrel do its, its business. <laughs> do you have a specific um, uh, vintner, uh, distiller that you use regularly, or do you kind of go no, from one to um, another? We kind of bounce around a little bit, but... Uh, you know, it's it's kind of funny. A lot of the higher end bourbons don't actually give you the best barrels. So I'll just say that <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't want to mention anybody else's company name out of turn. So what do you guys have coming up that we really want to know about but don't? Hmm. I'm a big fan of our, our summer beer. There's uh, Charisse. Uh, cherry ale. So, you know, it's nice we get to use Michigan cherries and uh, it's just a really refreshing summer brew. That's kind of fun. Um, Anything groundbreaking? Uh, News breaking? Yeah. We have a Nemesis, which is uh, the style is still a little bit to be determined, determined yet, but the Nemesis is, will be kind of our anniversary ale. And uh, it'll, it'll be big. <laughs> One last question. Any advice that you have for up-and-coming brewers uh, who, you know, may be, may be looking on and wondering, you know, what's the best advice for me to, to really get into the, the business and be successful? I think it's just a lot of it is about process, you know, knowing your equipment, knowing what is actually going into your beer, making sure you maintain a clean, healthy facility. and then it, the rest is just, you know, is going to be easy. Recipes change, they come and go, but uh, keeping a good facility is really the key.